All right, everyone, we are back once again. In the previous video, we connected our base station, told the base station what position it was in, set that up, connected to our rover, and it asked us if we wanted to calibrate our site, and we said no. Reason being is I want to show you guys real quick how to manually add control points, because the control points are what give us our site calibration. So if we hit our menu at the top left and we scroll down, we'll take another video to go over what measure mode is, what stakeout is, what COGO is. But for now, we are going to go into Data Management, Point Manager, and we are going to enter or edit control points. So we can see we previously added four control points when we were setting up our project. We added a CSV file that contained our control points. You could come in here and hit add, and now you can have a point name. You can enter a northing, an easting, and an elevation. And you can click save at the bottom right, and that's how you would manually add control points. Maybe your surveyor has, you know, your coordinates written on a stake right next to your control point. You can actually manually add these while you're doing the site calibration, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. So we're going to hit the X at the top right, go back hit the X again, now we're back to our plan view. So let's go ahead and start this site calibration. So I'm gonna hit my menu button, go to my project setup. I'm still connected to my rover, as you can see in the top right, my horizontal and vertical, I have a connection. So I'm gonna to go to my project calibration, tap that. Inside, so this is the project calibration screen. You can see we've got point name right here, horizontal residuals right here and vertical residuals right here. Our list doesn't have anything in it yet because we haven't calibrated any points. If we tap the plus button at the top left, we're going to bring up a map and it's telling us to select a point. We're going to calibrate our first point. So the black triangles are our control points. Got a couple options here. We can either tap a point and select it that way. Once you select it, it pops up in our text box up here. So I can tap any of my control points. Another way, right to the right of our text box, we have these three lines with the dots next to them right here. That's just a menu for our control points. And we can highlight any of these right here to calibrate on top of. So I'm gonna hit CP1, hit accept, and you can see it highlighted CP1. So I'm going to go ahead and walk over to my control point. And as I'm walking over, you guys can see that on screen, it's not telling us to go anywhere yet because our base station doesn't know where it's at yet. So I'm walking over to CP1 and I'm setting, I've got a nail driven into the ground, setting up on top of CP1, dropping my bipod legs, and I'm leveling my pole. And I'll go ahead and show you guys, you know, my setup for calibrating this. And we'll go ahead and do this. Go ahead and enlarge the screen for you guys. Just kind of bring this into the middle here. But I've got my rover set up. And I've got my control point, my pole is leveled. So that is set up on my first control point. So now that I've got my first control point set up, got it selected, got my pole leveled up, I'm going to go ahead and hit select in the bottom right. And our mode settings. So this is how we're going to measure that point. I'm going to change my measuring time to 180 seconds, 3 minutes. So what I set all of my control point measurements to, I set my vertical height up here at the top. You know, my pole is 6.562 right now. Gonna go ahead and measure that. Couple things, so you can see that my e-bubble calibration at the bottom left is out of tolerance. That's fine, as long as our pole is leveled up. I haven't leveled my e-bubble in a while apparently, so we'll fix that in a later video. But static measurement screen, so this is our site calibration screen. 
you can see at the top right up here, we are letting our measurement last for 180 seconds. Below that, we have expected precisions here, and we have a horizontal precision and a vertical precision. So if we look at the right, we've got 82 thousandths for both of them. What is that 82 thousandths? So if our measurement accuracy precision goes above 82 thousandths, then the system is not going to let us accept this calibration. We can look below expected and see the current precisions below that. And we can see currently my horizontal precision is a nine thousandths and my vertical precision is 23 thousandths. That's far below the expected precision of 82 thousandths. We could go ahead, we could adjust those expected precisions to be whatever you wanted. So if you had a job where you didn't want to be above say five hundredths, you can set these expected numbers to read five hundredths or fifty thousandths. That is completely up to you, completely and totally up to you. I shoot every one of these control points at 180 seconds. That's just kind of the standard, that's what I've seen works the best. You could let it sit here for five minutes, ten minutes, but the numbers down here for our precision aren't going to get much better. But yeah, we're just going to sit here, let it sit for another 70 seconds. A um, couple other things at the top right, you see your battery life. You can see that my receiver has 89% battery left. My TSC-7 itself has about 57% battery left. I can hit the X at the top right, take me back to my sight calibration screen. I can tap my horizontal and vertical and I can see a sky plot of my satellites. I can see more of my satellite information on the right that I'm using 15. I can tap on settings. This is where I can change that precision number. So if I wanted to change that I could. But we are just going to let it sit. Another 20 seconds. We'll shoot this point. And then we'll move on to our next point. We can see our horizontal precision has come down to seven thousandths now. Our vertical has come down to eighteen thousandths. Pretty good sight calibration. All right, so 180 seconds has elapsed. Of course, it's telling me my tilt value is out of tolerance because my e-bubble is out of tolerance. Do you want to save the measurement? I know that my pole was leveled, I'm looking at it right now, so I'm confident that my tilt is fine. I'm going to hit yes, I want to save the measurement. So we can see CP1 is now on our list, and we want to add another point. So I'm going to go ahead and tap CP4. Now something interesting has popped up. After I shot that first point, my sight calibration my base station started getting a position, a more accurate position. So now I can see that I need to go 29 feet to the north and 61 feet east. So I'm going to go ahead and walk that way. And as you shoot these points, your base station position is going to get tighter and tighter. So I'll kind of walk you guys through. I'm walking over to my second point right now. They're not very far apart. Set up on my second point. And we will see, I'm leveling my pole now on top of CP4. And you can see it's still telling me, I know I'm on top of my point, but it's telling me to go south, four tenths and east, basically two tenths. Go ahead and level my pole. For the sake, I'm going to go ahead and hit select. For the sake of time, every point you guys shoot, I want to leave it 180 seconds. But for the sake of time right now, we're just going to turn this into a 15 second measurement. Do not do this by any means. We're going to leave it at 180 anytime we do a site calibration. But for the sake of now, we're going to do 15. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And you can see my tilt value is still out of tolerance. Let this sit here and burn for 15 seconds. You can see my precisions went up because I started moving around. If we were to let it sit here for 180 seconds, my precisions would come down. Once again, tilt values out of tolerance. We do want to save it. 
but now we can see CP4 has been added to the list. I'm going to go ahead and hit my plus button at the top left again. I'm going to move on to my next point, which is CP3, and we're expecting this to be a little more accurate this time. Come over here to CP3, set my pole up, level my pole. And as we can see, I'm on top of it now. It's down to 300th accuracy. Go ahead and hit select. Going to let it run for 15 seconds again, just for the sake of time. You guys do 180 seconds. Hit start. And I'm kind of up next to the house here, so my precision may get a little worse here. But it's still doing pretty good. Fifteen seconds is up. Tilt value still out of tolerance. But we can see that now we're starting to get some error. Now we're going to move to our last point. Go ahead and walk over to it. Going to hit the plus button so that we can tap our last point. Going to come over set up on my last point here. Level my pole. Now we know we're really close. We can select that. I'm going to let this one sit here for 60 seconds. just so we can talk a little bit. So as you noticed, I had control points that surrounded my entire site. It's a great idea. If you have, you know, at least four points, we tell people five in case one gets destroyed. Four points, if you know, if you have a bigger job, you want to have more control points, but you want to surround the whole site because we are tying that, that base station, we told it it was in an unknown position. It doesn't know exactly, it knows closely where it's at. It's about as accurate as your phone with where it's at. So if you're using the GPS on your phone, it's going to be about that accurate, 10 to 20 feet. As we go around to our control points and we do that 180 second site calibration, we are literally tying down the position of the base station. We're making it tighter and tighter. And now once we shoot this fourth shot, it's going to be pretty accurate with where it's at. And we're actually going to give that base station a northing and easting and an elevation. So we're wrapping it up right here. Once again, we're going to save it. And we have completed our site calibration. One, two, three, four points. And we can see at the top that our calibration is intolerance. Horizontally, our job is accurate about two hundredths. And vertically, our job is also accurately about two hundredths. So we can go ahead... We'll go ahead and hit plus and just take a look at this. So my job, my little building pad right here, four control points around it, green on all four of them. I can tap this and see that, you know, I'm dead on this point. If we hit the X up here at the top right, we can go back to our site calibration screen. And we can hit finish. Accept the calibration. The calibration cannot be resumed or changed once accepted. That's what we want. We want this data to stay the same for our job. Go ahead and hit yes. Calibration complete. We do want to save the base station as a control point. And what we can look at is now we've got a new triangle where our base station's at. Right there. And we can hit the menu button, come back here to data management, go to our point manager, enter and edit control points, and now we've added the house dash Tyler control point to our base station list. So we've completed a site calibration, and you know, we can accurately do our job with GPS. So if I walk over here onto my building pad, you can see now I'm getting cuts and fills. I can see my design elevation, my building pad is supposed to be at 620, so I need to cut out about 2 tenths, 15 hundredths. But that is, you know, how you create a job, set up your base station, and do a site calibration. So next couple videos, we will go over 
what measure mode exactly is, stakeout, Kogo, and anything else that we can get our hands on.